it's Friday morning, and we're here doing a Facebook Live. This is Garden Guys and Gals. We've got Jerry, and JD, and I'm Sheridan, and we are in the midst of pruning and um, getting our trees ready for spring. And we were fruit. actually out this morning pruning. We, we are going to go back and finish pruning. Some no, of us are going to go back. <laughs> Some of us might right. go back. I was yeah. going to say, I didn't promise that. Um, no, you have to. You have to. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so um, we're, we're finishing up our um, our kind of series on pruning for this month. We've done a lot of work on pruning. If you have pruning questions, go back and look at our pruning videos. Um, they're pretty informative. We tried to keep them really short and sweet. Um, we did do a Facebook Live that was a little bit longer, and you can also find that one on our YouTube channel because we don't have the best reception out in the orchard, and so it gets a little fuzzy sometimes. So it's kind of it's yeah. pretty weird out there. It's kind of the dead zone where well, nothing really. It is an orchard. <laughs> So, um, yeah, if, if that bothered you, you can go back to our YouTube um, channel, and maybe we can put a link for the YouTube channel in the comments, and you guys can find um, that video. That. Yeah, I bet you, I bet you our, our tech guru wizard, Cody, can put the a link for that. The fourth member. Yes. That's you. Yeah, he's here with us, too. <laughs> um, so, we're also going to talk he's a little so, bit. so, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. We need to tell Cody congratulations on the baby girl. Cody is a new the dad again. The last time we had the uh, Facebook Live, he wasn't there because he was taking care of mom and baby. Yes. He's a good dad. And, but, we, and we, he left us for them. Uh, I will say that. Priorities. <laughs> but he did, he did call his little girl Libby after the Facebook Live. No, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I ran that past him, and he <laughs> told me no. All right. All right. <laughs> anyway, well, just wanted to shout out. I don't know about you guys, but I'm in Cash Valley. I woke up to two inches of snow. So springtime in, in Utah is kind of a hit and miss game. But the fruit trees are starting to, to <coughs> pop. They uh, are. Jerry has an apricot branch. You can start to see coloring. I was going to say, this is what we call color tip, or just the tip is starting to color. That's what I call it. Um, where the tip is just starting to color. And on apricots, along the Wasatch Front right now anyway, and I'm guessing most of the low valleys, you're going to start seeing some color on your apricot. Yes, absolutely. In fact, I saw one down the street that has bloomed. Bloom. Yeah. It depends on where it's located. Yeah. If your plant is located around some um, hardscapes, some asphalt cement, where it's warmer, or a brick wall, it's going to it's going to have gonna more spread. heat. And the flowering is uh, uh, because of the heat. That's what causes them to flower either later or early. That's why you can't do it on a calendar. Yeah. Right. It just depends on the temperature. And every location is 100% different. It um, is. I have a peach, and the buds are starting to swell on the peach. They're not quite as far along as the apricots. So apricot will be first. We usually get <coughs> apricots blooming first, and then we have peaches followed by apples and pears. pears. So yeah. the one cool thing I learned is the stone fruits, those with the pits in them, they'll flower first, and then the leaves come on, whereas apples and pears it's leaf first, and then they'll flower. Right. Which so means usually they're flowering later in the season than are the stone fruits. Which is why they're a little bit more cold hardy. They yeah. don't damage. You know, apricots, you're one in five years that you don't freeze apricots. Yeah, this is, uh, but one thing about apricots is look at all the blossoms on there. I mean, they are prolific. They will just have, and so sometimes it's good to get a temperature of about 27 degrees where you get that natural thinning and it'll thin half of them out. You get down to about 25. 24, you're dead. You're toast. <laughs> but, but a lot just of people, it's not the tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah just, just the buds. buds. And a lot of people worry about that. And that's something that I try to tell them is look, uh, 28 degrees, you're okay. 29, 27, you're going to lose some. And I kind of call it a natural thinning. You get down to 25, 24, uh, plan on buying apricots. So here's, here's the question for you. While we're talking about these buds coming out, I get this question a lot. And you guys that are watching live, feel <clears> free to type in your questions. Cody will shout them out to us. Um, that's what we're here for is to answer your questions about fruit trees today. But um, people say, oh my gosh, my tree is leafing out. It's, um, but it's got blossoms on it and I didn't get to pruning. What do I do now? Prune and it. Prune it. <laughs> it's better to prune late than not at all. Right, yeah. guys? Well, look at here. We prune this. Yeah. We just pruned it today. Yep. <laughs> yep. So we're out pruning and it's the end of March. It's not too late to get out there and get things pruned. But when besides pruning, like we've talked all month about pruning, but besides that, we wanted to talk about dormant oils because you hear a lot about dormant oils. What does it mean? Is it is it taking oil out of your car and spraying it on your oh, definitely. tree? No, it's not that. <laughs> Don't tell him that. No, it's not. 
So a dormant oil is um, an application that we put on um, while the trees are dormant. Um, we want to get it on before the buds break and kind of open. Um, because I think this is about as late as you'd go. Yeah, I'm starting to see some color on there. That's yeah. about as late as I would ever. I think you're okay. You're going to lose some of these buds, but most of them are not open yet. So right. I just want to interject really quick. When you start talking different bud stages, this is first pink on an apple. It's called first green because it's a leaf. It's a leaf, right. Okay. But USU has a fact sheet called Critical Temperatures and Fruit Trees. It is an excellent fact And it sheet. has just all of the pictures, pictures. of... Yeah. I'm a big picture guy. Uh, me too. <laughs> so all the pictures of the bud stages. So you can look that up. We'll put it in the comments. Um, so yeah, if you just Cody Google, will put it in the comments. And yeah. even if you just Google USU critical bud temperatures, it will pop right up. It will be the first thing in your search. And it also tells. You, go ahead. So, no, I was going to say that it just reiterates what Jerry says is it has a, a temperature breakdown underneath each bud stage because the tight buds can they can withstand. Yeah, they're fine. 15 degrees and still be fine. <clears throat> but. The Once more they open, open, they become a little bit more sensitive to temperature. So and oils. Yeah. <laughs> so back to oils. This is just mineral oil. Um, there is a dormant oil, and then there's a delayed dormant oil. And we were learning a little bit this morning. We were diving in a little deeper to what the difference is. So this is just mineral oil on the on the dormant oil. What well, did you learn? And the, and then they have a summer weight oil. Right. And that's just more refined and a little more diluted. So yeah, I was going to say, it's very diluted. Right. Dormant oils are usually 2% to water right. ratio, whereas summer weight oils are about 1%. But the one thing I tell people on, on oils is it's like bumper bowling. There's, a, there's an extreme on both sides that you can't use it. Right. So if it's going to be below 40 degrees or above 90 degrees, don't use the oils. Don't use the oils. So. And we use these to control overwintering insects. Um, sometimes you'll find oils that are mixed with fungicides like copper, things like that, um, that can be sprayed on your trees. So you can kind of do a two for one. It just depends if on. If you've got problems. Yeah, if you've if got you problems. fungal problems, that might be yeah. an option. But if you don't, if you don't then you this wouldn't is all do you need. But um, there are different <coughs> products that you can pick up. And if you guys are not signed up for the pest advisories, you absolutely should be. So we have a wonderful integrated pest management team. Um, that takes the guesswork out of spraying for you. So if you have fruit trees and you've got like coddling moth problems or you have greater peach tree borer, any of those things. Twig borer. Twig borer, any of those. Which, if you have fruit trees, you're going to have, have <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have problems. Aphids are another one that, that tend to be a big issue. But our um, IPM team will send out a newsletter directly to your email box based on your location and they monitor because insects develop on temperature, like according to temperature. They are not the same time. As all nature does, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Jerry develops on temperature, too. <laughs> oh, it's so true. If you saw me in a cold morning, you'd say, yeah, he's, he's dormant. He's dormant. <laughs> this is I, me being really quiet. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh, we give Jerry that time. We love Jerry. Um, but, yeah, so they develop based on temperature, <clears> and so it's not going to be the same in every location. So what I spray in Davis is going to be very different yeah, we're Jimmy usually does. two to three weeks behind you guys. So right. it's fun to watch these advisories because they start in St. George and, they and about every out. week it moves up a city. And then, you know, and and like Jerry says, insects, de and, and you said, insects develop a, based on heat units, but so do plants. Yeah, yeah. they all do. And they so that's do. why you kind of can take cues from plants. And if they're starting to swell open and start to show color, that's when you put this on right. because the insects are close second to because they got to wait till it leaves out before they're going to have food. Right. So they know that. And so, yeah, they'll, you just wait until as long as you can. Not too long. Not too long. The bumper thing. Yeah. <laughs> but what is, why oil? White oil why oil is Why not smothers. pesticides? Yeah, so this, this is a really great organic option. Like, it's just mineral oil, and it's going to smother the insect eggs and any overwintering insects, and it's going to make it so that, you know, they can't, you know, exchange gases, they can't continue to develop, and it's going to kill them. So it's a... A really good organic option. So, I mean, even if you're not organic, it's it's a great thing. It's not going to be terrible out in the environment. It's really natural, so that's a good one. Um, it's also I like it because right now we can control a lot of the insects. We can. If we wait, you were talking about aphids. It's yeah. One of them. If we wait, now we're trying to decide: do I go organic? Do I go traditional? 
um, how do I confirm, do I get ladybugs or whatever it is. Whereas right. if you do it now, some of that problem will be taken care of. It's that whole ounce, of, of, ounce of prevention yeah. worth a pound of cure. Right. Yeah. We did not give people the website to sign up for the pest advisory. So it's pest advisories, it's plural, dot usu dot edu. And I bet Cody can type that into <laughs> our um, chat for us. We're working, Cody, today. I know, poor Cody. If he can put it in the <laughs> Hey, in the he comments missed last part. time. <laughs> he, he's got he's to gotta make up, right? <laughs> last time we were around robining. So, Cody, do we have any questions that are coming in? Second behind, so that's just a general rule, Cody. <laughs> we, we understand you're usually behind. <laughs> are there any questions that are coming in that you can see for us? I haven't seen any. Coming okay, in. no questions. So. so, the way that the horticulture oils work is insects breathe through holes in their bodies yes. called spiracles, and so that oil coats their bodies and it suffocates them. It does. And the other thing is, I was thinking as I was reading through oils, is if you put you know, the summer weight oil on a leaf, it's kind of like dumping vegetable oil over a cheeseburger. You don't really want to eat it anymore. Well. Well, <laughs> speak, speak for yourself. <laughs> I know people that fry Twinkies, so I don't know. It's well, kind of the same concept. They're not aphid people. <laughs> Careful. <laughs> Sorry. That's, so, no, it I just, just that, that film prevents a lot of feeding from those piercing, it sucking does. insects and Absolutely. But again, make sure you read the label. Absolutely. Because you can mix some pesticides oftentimes, but like in insecticides, but there are... Always read the label. Yeah, always. there are things like sulfur, for yep. example. You add that to oil, and it becomes this napalm, yeah. and it'll burn it your will street. Burn. It always will burn. read and follow the label. Um, make sure. And the other thing I want to say is it doesn't cure all the pests. No, it doesn't. A lot doesn't. of people think, well, coddling moth, which is warming apples, I should be spraying right now, but that doesn't spray until way, usually the end of May yeah, is, mid is to usually late when May. we're spraying. Right. And so it, it only controls those pests that are overwintering on the tree. Right. That's you, it. You got to think of where they're eating. Yeah. Like coddling moth, they want the fruit, so they're going to wait until the fruit sets. It, it, isn't nature so cool? Because coddling moth has the same temperature requirements as those apples, and so once that apple gets to the size where that coddling moth can attack it, they're out. Yeah. I, I don't know. I just find that aggravating, but kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> aggravating, but kind of cool. No, and you're absolutely right. And this is why those pest advisories are so important is because there's not timing. just one thing. And the timing is different. And as things arise, I mean, I may have put on a dormant oil, but it may not help me with the coddling moth later. It helps me with the aphids. So there's so many aphids, different... Aphids, mites, yeah, scale. There's so many different things that are out there that we need to be treating with you know when we're trying to grow fruit and grow good quality fruit um so it's it's good to have a tool like that in your back pocket you know i i was reading the label of this earlier this morning just brushing up and it took me back i i went and did a yard consultation for a landscaper they had done a dormant oil treatment just treated every plant in the yard because they were full service <laughs> and all right. They called me out a couple weeks later, and all their dwarf Alberta spruces were black. Ooh. And reading the label this morning was like, well, conifers, certain conifers like spruce, are really sensitive to oils. Right. They have a really thin cuticle, and it just burns them. Well, and you've got to think about it. If I, and it goes back to that weight of the oil. Like, if I'm putting on a dorma oil on a conifer, those are the leaves. They're out. They're exposed. Yeah. They're not, it's not dormant. They don't <clears throat> do that. So, wow. <laughs> So again, everything's on the label. Yes, so make sure you read it. And we did. We read through it this morning. Um, you guys are good. Yeah. i, I got to admit. You just show up. <laughs> <laughs> but we appreciate that you show up. Job. That's what he does. He keeps us grounded and, and in the right direction. So when you sure. become a director, they give you this little certificate that says you don't have to do really anything you don't want to do. So your I, talk overcomes your do. How, how do we get that? I, I don't want it. <laughs> I don't want it, actually. So Cody says we have a question. Okay. Yeah, have you guys talked about application yet? Have you, uh, on how to apply the dormant oil? Oh, no, we haven't really done that. Okay. We, I guess we should. It's but just, this is a spray, so. And usually they have an emulsion mixed in with the oil, so it mixes with water readily. Mm -hmm. So you can just mix it into, into, into any kind of sprayer, and as long as it's not a weed sprayer, don't. Kind yeah, of don't yeah, keep so your pesticides and weed sprayers separately. Go ahead and buy two. Yeah, yep. and label Please. them. One for pesticides, <coughs> one for well, one, one for, for herbicides, insecticides, and yeah. one for herbicides. Because collectively they're both they're pesticides. pesticides. Yeah, I used the wrong word, didn't I? <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, it's really strange. Made sure you knew that. I, he's very good at that. He does correct me quite often. But it's okay. I can Anytime take it. Anytime I can. I can take it. Um, so um, it will give you all the directions for mixing. One thing I tell people is if you can prune first, you're not going to use as much of this product. Right. Some of these products are really expensive. I always prune. So, not only that, but then yeah. when you're feeling it with your gloves and stuff, you do get that mineral oil. You do. Feel on you it. get it on you, and that's yeah. not pleasant for anyone. But you'll also get better coverage because we've taken out all the water sprouts in the tree. We've taken out anything. And opened it up to yeah. the light. So it, it's much better to apply after you prune. I would give the pruning cuts a good 24, 48 hours to kind of peel over and dry a bit before I apply something like this. That's just my personal preference. I but don't. Yeah. I, I do it when I feel like I want to. <laughs> That's half the battle in my world. It's just, I don't want to. And now we know, and now we know Stop. too Stop. much about JD. <laughs> Another question about you know, like the pruning. Um, somebody asked, is it better is it, is it it better to prune when it's dry, or can you prune in the rain? Can you prune in the rain? Well, what have we been doing, man? I was going to say, <laughs> here's the deal with what we do. Um, every time Sheridan schedules a pruning demonstration of any kind, it'll either snow or rain. It's so true. So or hail sideways. We, yeah, well, it's done that too. It's done so that. we actually control the weather. We didn't realize this, <laughs> but we prune in any condition at all. I prefer 60 degrees, nice day. Short sleeve shirt. Short sleeve, <laughs> middle of March, maybe a lemonade on my hand, you know, those types of and things. And how often does that happen? Yeah, never. never. So that's why we prune whenever. and. Our schedules are pretty busy. Yeah. And so for us even to get together sometimes is a trick. And so we will, if it's scheduled, we prune. Yep. Because we if we don't, it doesn't get done. Yep. So right now this morning in our orchards, we have a bunch of Master Gardener docents, our advanced Master Gardener group that are out there pruning and doing and they're our on their work own for right us. Now. <laughs> they're on their own. I said, please don't cut the trees. It's if base. I, we'll be back. <laughs> yeah, if we hear a chainsaw. <laughs> We're going to leave. No, they're awesome. And I they completely are. They're trust really them. Good. They're, they're doing a great job. So they're out there helping us prune this morning. And it snowed last night, and it's wet. So uh, they're they're the hardiest group that we have. They're good. They're great. We really appreciate our volunteers. We they're do. Great. They're amazing. I shouldn't have said anything about them cutting down a tree. No. <laughs> well. There's a few things you should have said. They are great. Could we have another one? Yeah, there's a couple more that have come in. But this one says, from Stacy says, my dormant oil says I can reapply every three to four weeks until bloom. Is it necessary to make two to three applications? Does dormant oil work for grapes and berries? Um, so yeah, you can make more than one application. You Definitely. can, but why are you applying it so early is kind of what my question yeah, is. I, 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 I normally will tell people, I, I do one, mm -hmm. and I do it just as uh, on color tip where you just start to see the pink or the right. green, whatever it is. It, it's, it's a natural product. It's not going to hurt anything. Right. It, it does say on a couple labels not to do it more than two or three times because right. it can add up. Yeah, that's yeah. true. It I can add up. Right. right, so maybe you know, <coughs> try and stick to once, get the correct timing. If you need to do it again, then you can. But I found that, like you said, dormant oil is kind of a one and done thing for me. I don't usually go back to it after I've done it once. So. Another question. This is kind of a. There's two people that asked this. Emily and Beth. Is that one? Emily said, "I have a young apple tree." Can you spray even though you haven't had any problems yet? And then Beth said, I planted trees last spring. Do I, do I need a, do I need dormant spray and stuff to young trees? Um, what do you guys um, think on young trees? So I ha I probably have a different approach. If you line us three up, you're probably going to get six different answers. <laughs> but I, I kind of come from the camp of it's, <laughs> if it's not broke, don't fix it. If I haven't had aphid problems in the past, I'm not going to. But... If I start seeing it, then I'm going to really do it as a preventative that next year. Right. And I'm of a, a different, uh, I, I think, <clears throat> I'm going to get into the habit of every spring spraying with the dormant oil as a preventative. And I can do it both ways. But to me, I just start off with the dormant oil. I mean, okay, so. And, that, and, and again, JD, it's just opinion. I'm, I'm kind of in the middle of you guys, honestly. Yes, you are. Literally. I'm a sandwich. <laughs> Um, but, I mean, I can see getting into the habit of it and that being a really good thing. And I can see waiting um, until you do have a problem. Um, but, I mean, this is something that's not going to hurt the environment. No, I'm it's, not spraying it's a, a chemical. It's a really safe option. So, yeah, I just kind of want to throw that out there. It's not a chemical, so I don't mind doing this. It is a chemical. Year. It's just a well, natural chemical. It's, yeah. it's a mineral oil. It's a mineral oil. 
I guess we could call it a chemical, but it's not like a, no, a synthetic it's, chemical it's is what I'm trying to say. Well, it is a pesticide. It is Never a mind. pesticide. I'm just going to say We don't know what we're saying. <laughs> this, is, this is an apricot. <laughs> <laughs> Get back to something What did we say about cold temperatures and us being dormant? Yeah. <laughs> Was there another question, Cody? Are we caught up? That's all the questions I've had so far. So if you, if you guys have any questions, ask them now. Yep. We're going to be wrapping up here in just a minute and get back to pruning. Um, if we sit too long, we get cold, so we have to. <laughs> we have to get back out there. So, um, But, yeah, get out there. Get the dormant oils on your trees. If you haven't pruned, prune first. Get that done. Um, go back and watch our pruning videos. Um, Cody, did you put a thing for the YouTube channel? I'm going to. He uh, will. So, subscribe to that, too. Yeah. You ha um, if you guys want to subscribe to our YouTube channel, that's a great thing to do. Um, then you will have all of those videos right there at the ready. We're trying to get all the videos on the YouTube channel. But again, if you're just logging in, the pest advisories, one of the best things you'll do this season. It's a fantastic tool. I can't live without it. It honestly. takes all of the guesswork out of when to, when to spray, what to spray. It has conventional pesticides as well as organics. organics yep. The other thing I like about it is it has pictures of insects. It has pictures of does your tree look like this? This is what this looks like. So if you go into the, even in the website, you can start to find out more information for yourself. And I'm always, the more information you know, the better off you're going to be at making decisions. Right. Yeah. And kudos to our IPM team. They do <coughs> an incredible job. They're for, the best. For us. That's they all, are so good. They're the best. They're on their they game. Really so thank you to all of them. That's who we're coming in line with these ones. Uh, on the grapes and berries, we missed that. So oh, we missed asked. the grapes and berries. Do we dormant oil grapes and berries? I, I don't. I don't. Um, just because of the pests that, I, that that aren't normally associated with grapes or berries. So yeah. I, I, don't, I don't Especially know. Especially the berries. I can see, like, maybe there being a need for grapes, and I would really pay attention to the weight of the oil on the grapes, and I would read yeah, the label very carefully. Grapes are but so touchy about they are. everything that I, I just, <coughs> like I said, if, if the aphids and mites aren't an <coughs> issue on that plant, then, then don't do it. Yeah, yeah if it's I, not broke, don't fix it. Yeah, thanks on that for reminding one, I would us. Probably say no. We missed that. And what was the other one, Cody? Um, what brand do you guys use for the dormant spray? Well, they're all the same. They're yeah. all, I mean, it's just mineral oil. You can pick up whatever brand. I mean, this one's high yield, but there are a bunch of different kinds. Um, there are. It just, just depends on where you buy them. Yeah, yeah. visit your local don't nursery and whatever they've got and recommend. Just grab dormant it. oil, straight dormant oil. And you can read the label and look at it, and it should be about 2% mineral oil. Yep. What instead of the instead of the brand, look at the active ingredient. Yeah, I was gonna yep. say that's much more important. The, the active ingredients. What are you spraying? So just mineral oil. All right. Last question. Oh, there's this, one more. This is the last one, and this one I almost know. Yeah. Should I be concerned if my peach tree has dark black spots on the trunk at the base? Um, dark black spots. How old's spots? the tree? Well, usually, what I ask. I mean, sometimes peach trees. You know, if it was your grandmother planted it and it's 20 years old, 25 years old, then it's time to replace yeah, it. They're short-lived. They're short-lived. They, they need replaced. Um, I tell people after 12, 15 years, go five, six feet away from it and plant a new tree. The so only that you can you can take it, but go ahead. No, the only reason I would worry <coughs> if it's close to the ground yeah. and it's got ooze associated with it, then that could be the greater peach tree borer. Right. But there's usually some really s nasty goo. Yeah. yeah, you can dig around, and they're usually right at the base. Though. Yeah, right That's where the right. soil hits the trunk, right? Yeah, yeah if it's just black on a, it sounds like an old tree to me because old trees typically do that. Obviously. She said it's, or he or she said it's four years old. Said, oh, well, yeah, then never mind. So probably um, not a, an age issue. It could be, I would look for the gumming. I would look for holes at the base. I, yeah, but if it's up in the trunk, I'm wondering about um, cranium blight. Because it will get into the buds, and if it's a younger tree, then you're, you're only looking at about a two inch diameter. Yeah, so depending on where you are, you can send in pictures to your extension office and we can take a look at it. So um, look up whichever county extension office you're in, and we'll. It might be nothing. Yeah, it might be nothing. Sometimes discoloration is common, um, but you can send it in and we'll take a look at it for sure. So. Thanks, guys, for watching. We are so glad that you guys tuned in with us this morning. And the sun just came out. All right, we're done. Yay! <laughs> so um, have, have a great time in the garden, you guys. It's spring. Get outside and enjoy it. And we'll see you guys soon. Thanks for watching.